Welcome to WCSU Library Tutorials. In this video, we'll be covering open access databases. Open access is a broad topic, so this video will be a little longer than others. But having an understanding of open access resources will be invaluable to your professional endeavors. First, let's take some time to define what open access means. Open access is an international movement to grant free and open electronic access to academic information as well as other content. An article, for example, is open access when it has no financial, legal, or technical barriers to accessing it. The article can be read, downloaded, distributed, printed, and used by anyone without violating copyright. Before we continue, it is important to point out that free and open access don't necessarily mean the same thing. The main difference comes down to legality and copyright. There are plenty of free resources on the internet but use of that content is still limited by copyright. You don't have the same right to use and share free content, and there's no guarantee that your access will stay free. Open access, however, is published under a Creative Commons license, which guarantees that it will always be free, and it requires no permission if you need to use or access the content. The Creative Commons is an organization that makes open access possible through its licenses. On screen now is a list of Creative Commons licenses that are used for open access resources. While it isn't necessary to memorize this list, it's still a good idea to familiarize yourself with variations in licenses. For a complete list of Creative Commons licenses, check out the link in the description of this video. Now, why are open access resources so important? The cost of access to academic publishing is commonly seen as one of its greatest barriers. If you've experienced hitting a paywall before, then you have some idea of how these pay-to-view journals restrict access. As a student of WCSU, you have access to fee-restricted journals, like ASP and JSTOR, because part of your tuition pays for these subscriptions. However, when you leave the university, your access to this content will change. While you will be able to access fee-restricted journals at the Haas or Young Libraries, you will not be able to access them remotely. And so, Understanding how to find quality and authoritative open access information is important. However, with open access resources, anyone could access their content, no matter their social, economic, or scholarly backgrounds. More people can read scholarly research at all levels of education and stages of life. New research is dispersed more widely, meaning scholars now have access to more information that can be built upon. Educators at all levels, from pre-K to beyond the university, have access to scholarly resources at no cost. It's also cost-saving for both people who wish to view these resources and the authors wishing to publish them. Now let's take a look at where to find some of the open access databases that the library promotes. Under Databases, click on the A to Z listing. From here, select the drop-down menu that says All Database Types and select Free and Open Access Databases. Each of these databases are accessible from any browser and not just through the library website. But make sure to remember what we discussed about free resources versus open access ones when selecting one of these databases, because it can be sometimes hard to tell which is which. The best way to do so is look for legality statements on each website. For now, we'll take a quick look at a database that we know is open access. We'll take a look at Cambridge Open Access. From this page, we can see the exact number of articles and journals Cambridge lists as open access. Let's click on the first journal right here. Notice this padlock icon next to where it says Open Access? This padlock icon is usually associated with open access resources, meaning that this journal publishes under an open access license. Keep a lookout for it when browsing other databases. There may be a time when this padlock symbol is present alongside an article. Now let's take a look at an open access article. We'll scroll down and click on the first one we see. Again, we see the padlock symbol telling us that this article is open access. But what if that symbol wasn't present? The best way to tell is by looking at the Creative Commons agreement that we mentioned earlier. If we scroll down a little past the abstract, we can see it right here. This agreement is what makes this article open access. In this description, we can also see what specific type of Creative Commons agreement it is. 
To see a list of all Creative Commons agreements, check the link down in the description. Just remember, though we went through the library's website to find this article, it is accessible through any computer and any browser. That's the beauty of open access. Scholarly articles at the fingertips of anyone who can access the internet. That's a brief overview of open access databases. If you have any questions about open access databases or need help with your search for information, reach out to us by following the links down in the description. Thanks for watching this tutorial.